All right, Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama and also the way it is, Fox 97.9. Joining us to talk up the Tide. We're about halfway through spring practice, and, of course, the A-Day game is April 21st. Got to subscribe to my YouTube channel for the very best in college football analysis from myself, but also from the best contributors around college football. So that's why we call ourselves, Stephen, the voice of college football. So I got a voice. We, of course, give a voice to the viewers, the fans, writing in their comments, their questions, their suggestions, their complaints, their discussions, their debates. And then, of course, we've got the voice of one Stephen M. Smith here and the best media contributors in the business. So this is the deal here, Stephen, as you well know. And it's fun. It's fun to keep the conversation going. Uh, listeners definitely uh, supply the content that we have to talk about. I consider myself fortunate being a part of Mark Rogers TV, a very fortunate human being all on this side of the uh, of the camera here. But Alabama football, I I've never seen this program this excited since uh, 2009. And uh, there's a lot of uh, rejuvenated energy from fans to players to, to coaches to just people walking around about Tuscaloosa. I have not seen this much juice, this much passion since the 09 season where you kind of felt something big was about to happen. And with this team and with the influx of new coaches, you can sense that something big is about to happen. That's an interesting take considering the winning has not stopped. Not a national championship every year, but national championship contention and really not relinquishing Status is the gold standard in college football since winning that first championship under Saban in 2009. I would think that either that vibe has never subsided or maybe people have grown a little bit complacent just thinking, okay, this is the way things are and this is the way things always will be. But uh, it's interesting that you're making a distinction about the 2018 vibe being a little bit different. You look at you got a lot of young uh, young coaches in here, Mark. You bring in Josh Gaddis from Penn State. He's 34 to work with receivers. Also the co-offensive coordinator. You bring in Craig Kumagowski from uh, the University of Miami. And, I mean, here's a guy that that Kane's defense the last two years, especially on the front line, 56 and a half of the 81 sacks for Miami the last two years came from the defensive line. And then prior to that, what he did as a longtime assistant at Missouri, second to none, taking guys like Coney Ealy and Micah Sam and Harold Brantley, and Shane Ray, Marcus Gold, and putting all of those guys in the National Football League. And Dan Enos, where the proof is in the pudding with him, took a lot of that average to below average talent at quarterback, whether it was at Central Michigan or at Arkansas, and turning those guys and to be a successful playmaker. So just surrounding Nick Saban with fresh, young ideas has really kind of helped the mindset for 2018. Because as good as Jeremy Pruitt was, as good as Brian Dable was, and, and those guys were good, as good as Lane Kiffin was, and he was good. When you get more young guys in there that can speak the language of a lot of these 17, 18, 19, 20-year-old guys, which are not their language, is social media. Now, that's their language. When you can get coaches to speak that language, but not just speak it, but also still produce the talent or tap inside the talent athletically that a lot of these guys have, you're killing two birds with one stone. And the one thing Nick Saban wants to do is be efficient killing those two birds with one stone. 